See you later. Or not, I can't, you know, anyway. <laughs> what, on to, what on to next? I don't know what to do next. Ah, oh, sorry, I'll do this next. Come here. Um, hello again. If anybody knows, um, put more pickups, sorry, more pickups. If anybody knows Finchley uh, in North London, more specifically Finchley Central, they've got a branch of cash converters and went in there, looked at all the shelves and only, only saw one game. Um, you know, in cash converters, they always have a cabinet full of stuff. And I went to look to, uh, after the shelves, I went to look in the cabinet. Oh, bloody hell, they had um, some really good stuff. They had a GameCube plus Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, Pokemon Coliseum, Smash Brothers Melee, and something else. I can't remember what it was. For $16.99. But a really duff, I had all the leads, but a really duff sort of third, um, third, um, what was it called? What's it called the, when, it's like a third person, <laughs> third party, really dodgy third party controller, really like ugly third party controller. So I thought it's worth it, it's worth it for the, the game itself, po Pokemon XD. But Pokemon's not really my bag. I, I would have bought it just to have, but and not play. And I don't generally do that. But it's nice to have a game that's I don't know that's worth something. It's an investment for, for the future, maybe if I ever want to ever need to sell it on. But I still I don't know. I just, I'm getting. I'm maybe I'm growing up and I'm keep putting. I'm I've been put off the idea of. You know, buying to sell. I'm just getting. I get bored with it. I get frustrated with it, and it's just ha more hassle. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, it gets to a tipping point where I have to do stuff. You know, I have to sell stuff on, but I don't enjoy it. And I, I've mentioned that in the past. And so I, I thought it's worth it for this one po Pokemon game. But again, Pokemon's not really my bag. I'm a bit, I think I'm a bit old. <laughs> I'm a bit old for it. And so otherwise, other you know, so in that sense, I'd be selling. I'd just be buying the the, the GameCube. It was a bit of a bashed GameCube as well. I'd be buying the GameCube just to have this redundant game in my collection, just because it's worth a little bit of money. And three other games which I'm not too bothered about because Smash Brothers Melee was platinum, so I probably would have traded that straight away. Because no room for platinum in my collection. <laughs> And so I probably would have traded that straight away. And Pokemon Coliseum is even less my 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 bag. Not my bag, man. Um, so I'm quite proud of myself for passing it up. I mean, it would have been a good get a good good collection to 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 buy and, and sell on straight away. But like I said, I'm I'm not into that. I'm less and I'm becoming less and less and less into that sort of game. But um Next to it, obviously traded in by the same person, there's a, a blue GBA SP with a little um, bundle, excuse me, a little bundle of um, GBA games and they were all obviously, or not all, but majority. There's about eight or nine games and I reckon five or six were um, GBA Pokemon games and they're obviously like um, collectible or good sellables. But again, this was 13.99. Thirteen ninety nine, and there was like there's a good collection of Pokemon games, and I was closer to buying that one. So I got it out of the cabinet and had a look through. But the the, the game book, the GBA itself wasn't in brilliant nick. All the the shoulder buttons were a bit were a bit loose, and it was just a bit scratched and dirty and stuff. And the screen was wasn't too bad, but no, no, I passed, and I'm quite proud of myself. Quite <laughs> quite proud of myself. I got home. I got home and um, just thought I'll, I'll check out what the sort of value is on eBay, and I thought you tit, you total and utter tits, because you know they're good sellables. But um, but then I thought no, because I wouldn't play them; they'd just be sitting redundant in my in sort of upstairs, redundant games. 
So, I, so then I sort of changed my mind again, and I was quite proud of myself. But I, I, as I was talking to the guy in there, um, he, he, he was t he was telling me, and he and he because he, he, he knew they were all Pokemon games, and he said, "Oh yeah, we've got a guy who, who comes in and um, he'll have all them, he'll have all them, and he'll sell them on Gumtree." I said, don't tell me that. He trying to tempt me, trying to frighten me into buying them. I don't know. So I said to him, oh, well, he'll have all them then. I mean, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I wasn't going to buy them, I was just tempted, but... Because I really wanted the games, but he wouldn't split them up. So it was literally the bundle or nothing. But the bundle, both bundles were worth it, but but no, I left them to this guy, their regular customer, who buys their stuff and sells it on, sells it on Gumtree. Because that's, that's no longer my bag. But... Um, so if anybody know, anybody knows Finchley, Finchley Central, um, they may well still be there. If you like Pokemon, there's really two really good, very good value bundles they've got. Uh, about eight or nine Game Boy, um, GBA games and an SP for $13.99. And a GameCube in, with four games including Pokemon XD, Guild of Darkness for $16.99. So, I'd get down there soon because that was a couple of days ago. Um, or it might be even longer ago, depending on when this gets uploaded. I probably won't upload it directly after the other one. <laughs> so it might be a good four or five days ago. But what I did get, all I, all I came away with from that one like trip into cash converters in Finchley, was this two Motor Chronicles. Um, I haven't got this one. <laughs> No fear of duplicates, I did know I didn't have this one. The only ones I got confused with were 2 and 3. So, I was saying to Craig, Craig Cherie, or as he's explained to me, Craig's here, he. <laughs> That's how you say his name, Craig, Craig's here, he. I was saying to him, my main, my aim is to get to a point where I've got all, video, all, all the video games I ever want to play. All the ones I'll ever want to play, and I won't ever want any more than that. And I'll, from that point on, I'll sell my duplicates, and then I'll sell on um, the fillers because I do have fillers. I've been looking at my, especially my PS1 collection. There are fillers in there, and then, um, and then I'll, I'll be able to just sit back and relax because, as far as gaming is concerned. Um, the proportion of my time which actually is concerned with playing the games is relatively small. As far as gaming is concerned, um, a lot of it is spent watching video game, um, videos on YouTube. Um, there's, an, there's a bigger proportion which is spent sort of looking on eBay, Amazon, Gumtree, you know, generally going out and about, because I like going out and about. That's what I do enjoy. And a, a relatively small proportion is actually for gaming it. And I'm, I'm hoping that I won't get to this point where I've got all the games I'll ever want to play. And I'll, up from that point on, I'll never see any more games where I go, yeah, I really want to play that. You know, and there'll be no desire to go out and buy any more. I won't have to sell any more. On, on, um, I'll just have this sort of perfectly round sort of a collection of games with no slack. They're all games I want to play. And so, in that sense, I thought with Tomb Raider, I bought the Tomb, the first Tomb Raider game in my last pickups. I thought if I get to that point and I've played through Tomb Raider, sit back and relax and play through it. You know, um, it's gamers enlightenment. That's what that's what I called it. Gamers enlightenment. You reach sort of a period of calm. If I get to that point where um, I have got Tomb Raider, I played through and enjoyed it. From that point, you want to, you want to, you to want to continue on because you continue on with the series you've enjoyed. So it makes sense to to get um, all of the Tomb Raider games, even though they're, they're not necessarily that desirable. I mean, the collection, the whole set itself, is more desirable than in, than the individual games. They're they're sort of um, more than the sum of their parts. If that makes sense, is that is that the, the right term? But that's fifty p. And that's all I got from that quite um, eventful uh, trip into uh, cash converters in North or well, Finchley, Finchley Central. Um, yeah. 
Uh, I think it's the same day, same day. Um, this is another reason never to discount um, charity shops. Never, dis never walk past a charity shop without going in. It's just a little tip, never walk past one. <laughs> because uh, I got my second copy of This World 2. It looks like I bought this exactly the same condition as the last one. Just manual and disc and uh, back cover, but no. If my first copy didn't have the front cover. It had everything bar the front cover. So I took it out of this one, because it's in better nick. I took it out of this one, and now the front cover is a bit wrinkled, um, is in my copy upstairs. So now I've got a proper, full, complete copy. So now I've got um, a spare Discworld 2. Um, not for one of trade, I'm afraid, but um, I've got a spare either way. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know it's going. I don't want to say it, but I know where it's going to go. I'm just going to have to. It's going to sort of chuck it in with a bundle that that will eventually be moved on. Because it is. I mean, the 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 case is knackered. I wouldn't normally buy a case like this, but obviously I've got my spare cases now, and it's two ninety nine. That's about as much as I'm prepared to pay. For um, you know, well, actually, it depends on the game, really. You know, if you get if you get a game that's like worth um, hundred hundred quid, hundred pounds in a charity shop, obviously you're going to pay more than three quid. So obviously, forget I just what I just said. <laughs> depends on the game. Uh, what next? This no, no, this. What we're we doing first. Today, today, after um, after my um, rubbish trip to the car boot sale, um, Jesus, another spot game for for the case was fifty p again. In uh, this is cash inverters in Waltham Cross now. Fifty p. It is MTV Sports Snowboarding. I've never heard of this one. MTV Sports Snowboarding, but the case is really nice. <laughs> so that's what I got it for. Um, I'll, I'll probably give it a go. You know, I, I don't like to I don't like to dismiss games offhand. I uh, generally I do. <laughs> I don't like doing, like doing it. But that's for the case. So what I'll do is take all the innards out, all the uh, the uh, the paperwork and the disc and the manual, and just stash it away, put it into a DVD wallet, give it to charity. Uh, in... So, uh, so yeah, that was Cash Inverters, also in Cash Inverters. Two Xbox games. Street Fire, uh, Anniversary Collection, and Mortal Kombat Deception. Uh, I don't have Mortal Kombat Deception, I have Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, so that's what I do remember. <laughs> it was just that one lapse with Tomb Raider, and they were both a pound. Both a pound. Um, two quality titles, by all accounts, and uh, Mortal Kombat, I've been quite getting into Mortal Kombat recently. Um, one of the reasons when I got I really enjoyed Sean Sidious's playthrough of Mortal Kombat 9, you know, the recent one. Because that, that, that looked like a really good game. So I've been on a bit of a, a Mortal Kombat buzz. You know, binge, so to speak. And um, also in Walking Cross, earlier today, probably the worst condition PlayStation 1 game you're ever likely to see. But it's only 99p. <laughs> Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Collection 2, no, it's not Street Fighter 2 Collection, Street Fighter Collection 2. Um, I've, I was given, um, last year sometime, I was given the, the first in this series by uh, Craig Ishiri, <laughs> Craig Ishiri, and um, uh, very, very kindly sent it to me. And now I've got this one, it sort of rounds off the, uh, that sort of mini collection. It looks like just it's absolutely shot, and it is generally. There's one section of case. Move all that out. 
don't know how that happens, but how does anyone do that to a case? But I bought it because discs a bit the disc may well not work, but I'm I would I would lay a bit on it working, but it is pretty knackered. The paperwork is all in really nice condition, which is just surprising you considering considering how, how knackered the rest of it is. So it you know it passed it passed the the, um, the quality control. So and that was only a pound. Yeah, it was only a pound. So that's a nice good one for the collection, and it's got I forget what versions of Street Fighter it has because they're all Street Fighter Two standard. Street Fighter Two World Warrior, that's the original, isn't it? Street Fighter Two Champion, so it's Street Fighter Two Turbo Hyper Fighting. I think that they're all versions that you can get on the, the Super Nintendo, aren't they? Because the first the first one in this number one has. Um, one of the alpha games, I forget which one it is. It's an alpha game, a version of one of the alpha games that you can't get in, in on any other any other um, format, I think. But yeah. Right, that's that's it for just rent sort of random general stuff. Two more games to show you. Coming up to 40 minutes. <laughs> um, this is a game that was physically at the top of my list, my, my Word document list. I, I've got all the, all the I've listed all the games I ever wanted to buy. Well, not all of them because there are some that I don't know on you know that I should have put on the list that I haven't. Some that are on the list that shouldn't be there, so it needs looking at. But either way, um, right at the top of the list, I've taken all the game, all the best games that I really want, my most what look after sought after games, and I've put them in their own sort of little special section. And then all the ones underneath that are all the sort of the, you know the, the general games. Um, and this one was actually physically at the top of my list, but it wasn't realistic that I was ever going to buy it because it's one of those games that um, one of those games that um, it's an import game, um, never released in the UK, but was released in PAL regions, and so the majority of the people selling it on eBay are abroad, so you have to ship it in from out out you know out of the UK. And they they charge way too much for it. There's no, it never comes up on auction, and so there's no nobody knows the real value of it. So it's just going to be unless you're prepared. It's easy to get hold of if you're prepared to pay the money. They're asking price, which isn't worth it. And um, I was looking on the Computer Exchange website one day, and I, was, I just typed in this random game, and it came up. Oh, wow! And then I clicked on you know, on it. On the name, on after the after the search engine, and it came up the, with um, four copies in CEX in Wood Green, and none, no more in the rest of the UK. Four copies in Wood Green. Those are the only copies in the whole of the UK, which is just bizarre. The weird thing is, is I thought it was a game I already had. I was just sort of like seeing how much they they sell it for now, you know, randomly. I thought it was a game I already had, and just forgot about it. And I was in that branch in Wood Green, and then I saw it on the shelves. But then I did a double take. I thought, hang on, that's not the one I've got. That's the other one. That's the one that only appears on um, only appears on eBay, and and people charge they charge way too much for it. And I'll get it out after that waffle. And it's Artanelico Melody of Alimia. What I've got is Artanelico Two. Melody of Metaphalica, yeah. <laughs> this was never released in the UK, I think. I think. I know people say that, there's some games people say that about, like Rule of Rose, never released, never released in the UK. Most people say on eBay that you can't get it in English, but you can. There have been ones sold. There was one, there was one in, uh, a sealed one sold for 500 quid on eBay. And it had it had English on the back. As it is, this is all Italian. See, so yeah, and it says right at the bottom. I don't know if you have to read that. Next to the 505 games above it, it says don't don't um, don't don't have a go at my Italian pronunciation. Gio gioco gioco gioccio gioco in inglese. Manuele in Italiano. 
So I'm game that mean, I'm guessing that means game in English, man manual in Italian. So and they had four copies. I don't know why they've got four copies. Obviously someone's traded them in or that maybe they've shipped them in from somewhere. But four random copies all turned up at the same time. Weird. So I'm guessing they've still got any. If anybody knows no CUX and Wood Green, it's only eight quid. I think that's a good price. That is a good price. So I I just snap it up. It's it's probably more for um, RPG completists, not really for anyone else. I mean, the, the first game, you know, you pretty much it's going to be pretty much more of the same. Oh no, the uh, the second game, but um, it's a nice thing to have, and it, it will get played. But um, again, obviously, with with it not being in English, it's going to be for PS2 or. PS2 or RPG completists. Well, and no, it does actually have these the subtitle. You won't be able to see it. It says Melody of Elemia in. It's in English. It's not even in Italian. I don't know why. I don't know why they do that. Why do they? They just disregard the English um, market. There's so many games like that, or versions of games. You can't get Wild Arms Five in other than the standard version. Um, you can't get. Um, you can't get Samurai Shadow Anthology. What else can't you get? There's loads. You know, people say you can't get Ruler Rays, but you can. But loads of games that they just they release on the continent in Europe, but not in the UK. It's really frustrating. Well, I haven't said that. I would be quite frustrated if I didn't speak English, because at least well, I'm only really complaining about the manual and the box art, you know, which. Which, you know, in the end of the day, it won't really make much difference. But if you don't speak English, a lot of games you won't be able to play. <laughs> that must be just a proper kick in the nuts, especially if it's a game you really want to play, but it, it will never appear in your, in your home, your, your first language. But, so, luckily I will be able to play that. I just hope I don't need to consult the manual. Jesus. Looking at the whole length of this video, it's coming to 45 minutes, or I've gone past 45 minutes, but... <sighs> Last one, um, in game, a couple of weeks ago, um, took advantage of what appeared to be a really good um, price of a pre-owned game in game, game in game. Um, a game that I've been holding off buying because um, I wasn't too sure about how, you know, whether I liked the game. It was a game I wanted, but. Um, there have been other games released on this format which I was more definite about that I knew so I was more prepared to pay for their you know pay the, the brand new cost anyway you'll see when I get it up <laughs> bearing in mind this is pre-owned $23.99 no sorry $22.99 Pandora's Tower limited edition again it's not limited it's not limited it's only as limited as they make it don't believe the bullshit it's, it's only as limited as they make it. There's no edition number. That's what limited means, isn't it? <laughs> I wasn't too sure because I've, I've got um, Xenoblade Chronicles and Last Story, and they're more my sort of game. This is more. This is more um, RPG crossed with Devil May Cry, God of War, isn't it? But it does look a really stylish game. But it didn't get as uh, another reason was that it didn't get as good reviews as Last Story and Xenoblade, so I, I held off. I held off until I saw a bargain, and I, I wasn't going to buy this, so I actually walked out of the shop. But it was twenty two ninety nine, and I sort of calculated something in my head that I said to myself, "It is a game you want. You're not likely to see it cheaper than that anytime soon, and um, it probably won't depreciate much. You won't." Ever, you know, if you ever, you know, didn't like it, you'd easily be able to sell it on eBay and get your money back. So at least. So I, I sort of thought that over my head, and I went back and I, I thought, sod it, I'm going to buy it, and so I did because I generally don't pay that, you know, sort of uh, pay, spend that much money on video games all in one go. But. Um, it, it had the box and it had the label on it, and there was a little tear, but it was in pretty nice nick. And I took it to the counter, because it was an empty box. And the guy um, opened up the drawer underneath and took out this, this one. If I'm honest, it looks brand new. 
I wouldn't be surprised if it was because it looks brand new on the inside because it's got it's got um, a steel book it's got a man it's got a manual for all the other languages and it's got an all yeah um, and it's got the game I think that's was there an art book I'm not sure it will say <laughs> Can't remember what's in it now. I could, I could open it up. No, he's got an art book. Yeah, that's what it was. It was an art book. But so, and all, there was another reason for holding off is that it was the same price as the uh, the last story box set, but it wasn't as good value because there's less in it. So I thought I was waiting for a, a cheaper cheaper copy, and it came up. So it should still be this price. I know the actually it's, it's gone down. It's gone down the the. Um, the new price has, has gone down of the standard game to twenty four ninety nine anyway. So hopefully, you should if you see one of these, it should be a good price. I mean, even if it's not your sort of game and you just want to buy it and sell on, you should get you know you, you could even make some profit if that's your sort of game. But um, it's in really nice nick, and I would be surprised if this wasn't brand new because they do do that, don't they? Now I've noticed a lot of places do that. They um, sell things as pre-owned when they're not, just to move them on. Maybe they sell it more easily. But anyway, I'm chuffed to have this, and you know it's past my. I've ju I justified it to myself with my. Uh, you know, I thought it through and it was okay. It passed the test. This is now over 50 minutes. This video, so it will be split into two. <laughs> I've been gabbing on for over 50 minutes. Jesus Christ. So, as is, I'm going to cut it off here. I'm going to have a shave. <laughs> it's warm. Might even go and have a drink and sit out in the garden. <sighs> Seems a shame to sit in making videos when the, when the weather's nice. But I'm knackered. I've been out. I've been out to the car boot, obviously. So. Thanks for watching. Now, thanks to all of my subscribers. I've had um, one or two recently. Um, Hopefully this time I should but I should break the 666 subscriber. Um, <laughs> not that my subscriber count means much to me because I I don't keep an eye on it. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, peeps. Um, hope everybody enjoys the summer, enjoys the Olympics, because that's coming up next week. I'm excited. Are you? I just watched the football yesterday. And it was a bit a bit of a letdown, but. It's good to see Ryan Giggs playing for England. <laughs> if only Gareth Bale and Jack Wilshire weren't injured. Anyway, thanks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, see you later. See you later.